Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, welcome to St. Bartholomew's Church, Dean, this beautiful little uh, village church just on the outskirts of Petworth. And uh, as I came into church this morning, I thought, saw the most amazing thing. The snowdrops are starting to come through. We might not have any snow here in West Sussex. On the other hand, we do have these beautiful snowdrops. And I'm looking forward to see them over the next few weeks. I have put a picture on Facebook for you to see. Today in the Gospel reading, we hear about our patron saint, Nathaniel Bartholomew. So as we begin, we prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, meeting God in word and sacrament. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. And write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who didst govern all things in heaven and earth, mercifully hear the supplications of thy people, and grant, almighty and everlasting God, Mercifully hear the supplication of thy people, and grant us thy peace all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the uh, first letter of Samuel, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Now the royal Samuel was ministering to the Lord and to Eli. The, Lord, the, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called. Samuel, Samuel, and he said, here I am, and ran to Eli, Eli, here I am, you called me, but he said, I did not call you, lie down again, so he went and laid, laid down, and the Lord again said, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me, but he said, I didn't call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord said, called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. Grace and truth have come through him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was beside her, was from beside her, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will, not, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, and light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a lovely picture in the Old Testament of Samuel being called there in the temple and suddenly hearing this voice calling him, not understanding where it's come from. Samuel, Samuel, that the Lord calls each one of us, but sometimes we don't understand. We don't listen to the voice, we get the message wrong, and yet he wants the whole world, every person, to be in a relationship and love with him and with each other. He calls us to follow him. Here I am. That's how we respond to the voice and calling of God. Here I am. I am come to do your will. Your servant is listening. We do get it wrong. We do put off the voice. We, do, we don't respond to his call often. And yet if we be still and listen, we know that God calls us to do all sorts of things in our lives. But above all, to pray and to be with him and to listen to him. And Nathaniel Bartholomew was somebody who was prepared to listen, to be still under the fig tree, 
to have time where you set a time time to pray. It's a lovely um, gospel about evangelism. Here we have the first evangelist, if you like, Philip. Philip, who had been shown Jesus. The thing was with Samuel in the Old Testament, he hadn't known the Lord, he didn't know him. He had to be pointed out to him by Eli. Be still and listen. Say, here I am. Your servant is listening. And so Philip, who had found the Lord, went unto his friend. He wanted to share the good news. Nathaniel, we have found the one whom the prophets wrote about. The great expectation of the Messiah coming. And here uh, Philip says, we found the one. Eureka is actually the Greek word. That's excitement of finding something like that. Eureka. We found the one, the Messiah, the one who is to come. And so he wanted to share the good news with his friends. You know, there's lots of, at the moment, in um, the marketing world, evangelism going on. That people are very keen to spread their products. They're very enthusiastic about themselves. And they're, not, and they're prepared to go out and say, come and see. Come and see. This week, um, I was given, in the post, five of these bags. Lovely bags. Lovely picture of uh, Petworth on them. You can see the church at the end of Lombard Street. And of course, the other side is uh, what the promoting the co-op. We've got a new co-op with lots of new shelves and lots of new cupboards. And the co-op are very clever uh, because they um, send uh, things to all sorts of people to say, share these out and say, come and see. We're very proud of our new store and we want you to come in. And there's a lovely bag of crisps in them and some biscuits and a box of tea. Not much really, but just a little taster. Come and see. You now, when Nathaniel uh, responded to um, Philip, he said, Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip didn't um, uh, have lots of uh, theological comments or arguments or why should anything good come out of Nazareth? And Nazareth was a bit like a butt of the jokes, the Nazarenes. It was a sort of a contemptuous, but almost like Bogner or, you know, somewhere like I grew up in Cheetah Mill or Crumpsall. People would sort of say it with a disparaging word, how we have um, already got our shutters down, um, prejudice against certain things and certain people and certain towns and how we don't see into the core of things. And Philip didn't say, actually, uh, Nazareth's an all right place or any of those sort of things. He just said, come and see. And that's what the co-op is doing, very cleverly, uh, sending a few parcels out to distribute around for us to be evangelists for the co-op. Come and see. Well, we've got much more good things to spread than the co-op. We've got the message of eternal life. We found the one whom the prophets wrote about, Jesus, the Son of God. We need to be evangelists for our church and our community so that people can meet the risen Lord. Samuel had, didn't know the Lord yet, and yet he was prepared at the, at the advice of Eli to listen. All we have to do to people is say, come and see, come and join us to our friends and family. And that's how evangelism works. That's how the co-op and all these other stores and everything work. They actually say, you know, to you encourage your family and friends to come along. And we can't come into church at the moment, but we can come and see. We can share online. Yes, I've been to church this morning. Even though I couldn't go to the building, I watched it and joined in online to share, to actually uh, like, to make comments, to be proud of being a Christian and knowing the Lord and being able to say to people, come and see. And of course, Nathaniel, Bartholomew, 
went and saw, and he recognised the Son of God. Just because I said under the fig tree, you will believe what I told you, there must have been something significant about him being still and listening and praying under the traditional place of the fig tree. You will see greater things. You'll see the heavens opened, the angels of God ascending and descending. Let's invite people to come and see, because here we meet the risen Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We're going to have our offertory hymn now. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Blessed be the man that provided for the sick and needy. The Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. Now we can't give a church online at the moment, although you can come in for private prayer. But please do support us um, through our website. You'll find our bank details. Please do give online. Thank you. Here I am. pray in our prayers we pray for those whom we know particularly who need our prayers for those who've died recently for those in the national health service for all those on our hearts and minds particularly for our family and friends let us pray for the whole state of christ church militant here on earth almighty and everlasting god who of thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks to all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, 
unity and concord. And grant that all they who confess thy holy name may agree to the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially the thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, grace, O Heavenly Father, to Martin our bishop, for all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and truly and, right, and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, especially for those joining us here online, that with meek hearts and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And most humbly beseech thee of thy great goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all those who are in this transitive life in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in thy faithless holy ways, draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make our humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, with thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all those who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, for we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God, for it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet and right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, ever more praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our simple bodies may remain clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until he is coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. We come now to the moment of communion. And of course, we can't at this moment physically receive the sacrament, bread and wine. But we can receive the Lord Jesus into our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. So let us spend a moment's quiet asking him, the body and blood of Christ, to come into our lives. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life, Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart, by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and we thank you. Amen.
which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most firmly beseeching thee to grant that through the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee. And may beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we being unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom, and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, will honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, the Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, and mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, and mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So stay at home and stay in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.